morning and welcome to Manic Fishing. Well, I've just steamed out about 30 miles. I'm fishing a wreck that's not actually, you can't actually see this wreck on these uh, <coughs> relief charts. It's one I've known about for years. And uh, I'll say, they're either gonna be on here, loads of them, or there'll be nothing. It's just one of those wrecks. It was a bit hairy coming across the shipping lanes. Uh, very busy this morning, but we'll uh, just, I'm just about on it now. So I'm gonna see what way I'm drifting. And uh, it's a little bit windy out here, but it's, uh, it's okay, a bit chilly, but uh, <coughs> let's get myself round and see where I'm drifting. Right, what I'm gonna use today, cause it's, uh, the tide is moving. Well, it's not too bad. It's about 1.8 knots. I'm gonna be using uh, <coughs> a variation of lures. I've got them already made up on here. So I've got sidewinders and some uh, lazy lures and some other bits some drift ones on here. So I'm gonna try these first and probably put down an eight ounce lead to see how that gets down there. If not, I'll hope I can drop down to a six and then if it's okay, I'll whack my lure rod down. But uh, let's just uh, get myself, I can see where I'm drifting. So I'll get myself move around and get set up. <coughs> now in here, I've already got my uh, stuff. I've got it all set up. So in here, I've got all my swivels, beads and whatever else. Um, I had them, I got them all set up uh, yesterday when I come out. Um, and my different lures and some weight so I've got an eight ounce weight that I'm gonna try today rocking about a bit <coughs> so what I use is like a it's a DIY boom you buy these these are quite cheap uh, I think they come in about 25 for about seven quid they're quite cheap and that's like an anti-tangle boom and that will help you out and all i've got on that is 30 30 pound fluorocarbon um a bead and a like a fast clip swivel and i just connect these ready-made lures directly onto it so i think i'm going to go with a i'm going to go with one of these these are like my favorite these are a scary and they're actually a sidewinder no skip so these are already done and I've got them on about I suppose about six seven foot I'll see how it goes with that I might lengthen them or even shorten them but let's try this first so clip it on right and I'm ready to go so I'll just get myself round and uh, start drifting now I didn't come over that wreck when I was seeing my drift. I, I got to the side of it, so I'm not gonna scare any fish because there may be some big bass out here. I know the bass season's over now, but you can still catch them, you know, so um, I release everything anyway, but uh, I'm uh, hoping really for some nice pollock today. Right, so let's get the first drop down. So if I can get away with a slightly lesser weight, I will. But we'll try this, seems to be going down quite nice. I'll say it's gonna be one of these wrecks, see if it's gonna be loaded or it's not. Right, I'm nearly on the bottom. It's quite deep, right, I'm on the bottom. So I whine about 20 turns. So I can see now that my lines turn blue. So on this, uh, this down braid, you can see, uh, say if you keep counting, you can see um, when you get to the depth, because it's like got meter marks on it, which is quite handy. Yeah, you do need eight ounce because the line's going right round.
Yep. Straight in. Nice. Oh, mate, that's big. Straight into a pollock there. I'm sure, it's a pollock. Oh, nice. First drop. I'll say it's going to be one of them wrecks. They're either going to be here or they're not. And I'm hoping by the first count they're here. That feels quite nice. And my net's round there, so I'm hoping I can get this. It's just coming on the leader now. Don't lose it, Mark. There you go, first one. So, that's nice. It's always nice to break your back for the first one. Nicely hooked. Oh, so cold. So yeah, quite a nice one. Not a double figure, but I'd say six, eight pound, nice. So what I'll do, obviously I've just had that first one. I'm just gonna uh, go back round and try and get sort of on the same drift. I'm gonna work the whole of this wreck, but you know, I've just had picked one there. So I'll go back over that same area. I'll say this isn't generally my style of fishing. I do uh, normally just uh, use my lure rods, but when, it's, uh, when the tide's running quite a bit, so I'm catching my own wash there. When the tide's running quite a bit and uh, it's quite hard work, this is an easy option, you know. It's uh, it's uh, literally just wine, but what you do is you uh, never strike, you know. You just literally let the fish take it and wind into them. So I've come a little bit close onto this wreck this time, but I'm down, right. So one, two, three. Yeah, oh dear, it's missed one then. So drop it back down. Yeah, I think they are here today, thank God. It's a long old steam out. Yep. That hit it on the way down, I think. That's a nice one. Oh yeah, blimey, got to put between my legs. They fight like mad Pollock. This feels quite nice. Yep. I got my net ready this time. Oh dear. out the back of the boat cool mate that's a nice one that one oh dear it's quite hard to net them that's it got that one oh now that's a double at the size of that. Oh. Hey, that's a good cracking fish. Yeah, pleased with that. So I just had number two. So I go back round, and at the minute I'm not going to change my drift line. I'm going to stay on that one because they're there. You know, it was just uh, sometimes it's just by luck, really. You know, you just. Uh, hit on the right spot you know instead of having to keep working that wreck they're there you know so I think they're all over this as I said it's one of them places they're either going to be here or they're not going to be here and uh, thank god they're here so let's just get myself back round now and what I 
will do. I'll catch a couple more and then I'm going to whack my, uh, going to do a, uh, whack a slow jig down, an H2O and uh, see how it works with these, uh, with the lure rods, you know, they do nail them with the uh, slow jigs, but I'll try and explain to you how I do that. The Pollock normally whack them on the way down, you know, right, we're just coming back round on this drift. Right, I've come back round, I'm, I'm on sort of that same uh, drift now, so I'm going to chuck my line over this side because it's going that way. Slightly over, but quite hard. The wind uh, is throwing me off a bit. So I wind quite fast. It works for me, you know. I only go normally about 20 turns. Yeah. Oh no, I think that's a wreck. That is the wreck. Oh dear. Oh well. Oh, I've got it out. Now this is always when you think, is the lure still on there or is it straightened out? I'm virtually off the wreck, so I'll check. So there's my weight. Oh yeah, my lure's still there, but is the hook in in any shape? Yeah, absolutely fine. So no worries there. So right, I'll go back round. And what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to go a little bit further out because I'm just getting on that wreck just a little bit too quick. So just going to give myself another 50 foot and uh, it just uh, give me a little bit longer to get, you know, get my line down there properly. Yeah, that just, just turned my wheel. That just gives me a sort of a, about 50, 100 foot further away. So I'm down there because it looks to me like these pollock are tight, sort of tight on the bottom. Right, I'm down now. Yeah, both dogs are in there now. 21 degrees. I'm loving it. <coughs> I'll say I'm just going sort of 50 foot past each time just to see where these fish are. I think I'm round about where I was, where I picked up them first two now. So I deleted all my trails, it was getting a bit clogged up, but I'll find them. Don't worry about that. I must admit this is quite an easier option than lure fishing. Sometimes you get exhausted, you know, um, working it all the time. At least you can just literally, you just literally reel, you know, and the fish will just hook itself. As I said, you never strike, you just wind into it and uh, they'll hook themselves. Not that far out. Yep, there we go. Oh dear, nice. Yeah. Great. Doesn't feel as big, but until they see the, when they start to see the sky, see the light, then they start fighting. Yeah, look, it's just kicking now. I'm just coming up to the leader. Oh yeah, he's only a small one. But. Still perfectly fine. Yeah, still nice. Really beautiful colours on it. Right, so let's get back down there. So I'm about about on the same drift as where I was. I mean this is the best time. <coughs> well really <coughs> in a couple about <coughs> five weeks you're gonna really hit the big ones but I just like to get at it and get to fishing for them but this is the best time of year for me. You know it is good in the summer reef fishing and uh, you know uh, get a lot of taupe and smooth hounds and uh, other species but uh, the winter is great <coughs> you don't get uh, so many of the weekend warriors out um, 
around, you know, it's only the hardcore fishermen and the commercial guys who really uh, stick at it. But uh, if you put the time in and put the effort in, you know, it does pay off. Right, let's spin back round. The joys of GoPro. The, uh, I just had another one and the camera decided to freeze, but it is what it is. And of course it's freezing cold, you've got to take it out of the cage and mess about, but anyway. Right, so we're just back round roughly on the same sort of drift line. I knew it would be a bit fast out here, that's why I set all this, um, you know, set this gear up. And what I might do is I'm going to make another rig up, I think, and make it. Normally what I do is I hook a... <clears throat> hook the lure around there and then I pull it to my door so it's about probably seven eight foot I think these are slightly smaller that I, I mean some people use them four foot and they get away with it it's just a confidence thing you know even though I have hit a few fish but it's just a confidence thing you know I know what works for me you know uh, as I said really my forte is lure fishing but I do do this style of fishing I just prefer lure fishing um, but uh, yeah I mean I'm nailing a few so uh you know it's the same as anything my, my patience ain't great and i like to uh, if something's not working straight away for me I, I i just change it around you know the old uh, the old patience ain't great <laughs> just working my way down this wreck right so i've just put a longer trace on this if you can see this this is about how i fish them well actually this is probably a little bit longer but it'll be all right but this is lot this is longer because we're uh, we're slowing down it gives it a bit better action but that's just my experience of it so uh, it's a little bit harder to get the fishing because you have to wind the boom right up and then try and uh, get it but i'm sure i'll uh, i'm sure i'll suss it i've just come across a different part of this now i'm on the sort of bottom edge of this but it is showing some fish down there i'm not quite down there yet so Come on, that's it, I'm down now. And I'm on with a scary. They're my favorites. This seems to work for me. Oh yeah, yes, look, see they go straight in. I'm not saying that that's me changing me trace, but mate, that feels nice. Cool, yeah. That feels nice. <laughs> I don't know. Could be it changing, you know gives it that better action I'm not sure but what can I say we've hit it we've hit them and just moving over slightly let's hope I can get it in now I've talked the talk so what I'll have to do is wind it right the way up so the boom's touching the eye and then hopefully the lift of the rod will get it into the net that'll start to uh, kick a bit now I can see it now yeah it's lovely Lovely size, so I'll hit that to there. Try and get this in. I'll have to shorten that boom a little bit. Yeah, another nice one. Probably just on a double that. That's a lovely, healthy one. Beautiful. So I nailed that. Skip's going for it. Right, so I'll shorten that tray slightly about 18 inches so uh, that give me just that little bit of lift and I'm roughly on that same sort of drift maybe a few feet over but there you go all right let's see yep oh no <laughs> just let go yeah back on nice oh mate they they nail it cool mate that's nice so I'll, I'll do wind them wind retrieve quite fast some people do it slow they stop and mess about or, I don't know this does feel nice this one let's hope I make it look a little bit more professional with the net this time of course diving that so on my lure rod that would be bent in half yeah it's really diving feels slightly different this 
be nice if it was a cod oh look at that plop up yeah, that's a nice chunky one and that just gives me i think i need to practice on my landing net skills but mate that's a double that's a double all day long there look at that one ah. come out skip look at the size of that there mate that's a chunky one that's a beauty absolute beauty i suppose that's i don't know 14 maybe come out skip what i try to do is when that lead hits the bottom i wind quite fast because that trace is is up in the air and what it's doing is when that lead hits and you wind up that that lure is going up like that so if you wind quite fast but i do wind quite fast anyway i, I sort of wind the same speed as most people probably would retrieve but as you can see it is working now what i'm going to try was giving these these are uh, lazy lures they're about 30 grams so they're a little bit too light to use uh you know a direct so i've got this on a about a five foot you know same sort of setup but i'll try this and give this a go these look pretty good hey up mate i'm in with this there you go oh yes nice oh yeah that's big cool mate well there you go lazy lures <laughs> that'll make his day and this is on a slightly smaller uh shorter snood so it won't be uh it won't be so hard to net so oh i'm made up with that cool yeah that's that's nice that feels really nice i don't know what it is fighting like mad yeah another big pollock yeah and that was just a little bit easier to get that in you know yeah look at that beauty on a lazy lure so I'm just going to whack back down with this uh, lazy lure oh nearly felt that then when I first started fishing like this as I said I only really do lure fishing I started fishing like this I went out with a friend of mine and I kept striking them you know and wondered why I was losing them you just literally there yeah, was another knock then you literally just yeah look oh mate that's nailed it like you literally just let them hook themselves yeah that's whack that yeah lazy little <laughs> They're loving it. Another big pollock. That's it. Yeah. Oh, it's not quite as big, but still, still a nice one up on that lazy lure again oh my fingers are freezing come out skip yeah another one that's not a double but still a lovely healthy fish right i've had quite a few on uh, the traditional way so that tide has slowed down now so i'm gonna i'm gonna use my lure rod and i think i'm gonna try I'm going to try this puffin. This is the one that I caught them nice doubles the other day. And uh, it's a savage gear. Where is it? Yeah, it's a savage gear. It's a 140 gram. I mean, really, this rod is designed for, for about, well, I know what it's designed for. It's designed for a 100 gram lure, but uh, I mean, you know, whatever. 
140. Don't moan at me, Mick Ward. But uh, yeah, 140. So I'm going to go round and I'm going to have a go with this. Right, so let's get down with this. Puffin, Tenry Bulldog, Puppy and a Shimano Stella. As I said earlier, it wouldn't be productive to use it like this because uh, the lure would have gone out miles, you know, and uh, I don't like to, uh, I, d I have got that other rod in there. I like this, I really like this. This is my fave. So I'm down now. And I know then Pollock could tie it on the bottom. So this should be the perfect uh, combination. I just make sure I'm on that bottom. All right, let's go back round. Oh no, look, I'm in. Yeah, look. Just move that lure slightly. Nice. The old puffing strikes again. See, different game on these rods. You can feel this. Oh, mate. Lovely. Yeah, nice. Nice pollock. Yeah, that's a double. <laughs> They're all doubles. Yeah, nice. Well, perhaps not. Maybe, I don't know, eight, nine pound that one probably. But it's still nice. Yeah, look, well nailed on a puffin. All right, let's have uh, another go over with a puffin. The, uh, make sure it's still intact. Yep. So they, uh, they nail it, you know, them fish. Absolutely nail it. Put that out of the way. Yeah, definitely worth, it was definitely worth coming out here today. You know, it was one of those wrecks, it's either gonna produce or it's not, you know. And uh, today it certainly has. I'm happier when I'm doing this style of fishing. I do like it, you know, it, it, it you know, you saw, it is productive the other way, but it's just, um, once you hook one on this rod, you know, on these rods, it's just no comparison. Oh dear, yep, nearly then. Yep. Yes. Nice. Yeah, that's a nice one. Oh, flip. That just come off. That was a nice fish there. Oh well. The one that got away. Now, I've had a few fish, so I'm going to try these now. So, um, this is an H2O, it's a 130 um, slow jig. So uh, let's give that a go. Go down there, that should go down nicely. And uh, just see if we can have them. As I said, I have had quite a few fish now, so I don't mind trying out a few things. So let's uh, get myself round and we'll have a go. All right, well, I lost me puffing and uh, that felt a really nice fish, but you know, no good keep going on about it. Um, it is what it is but uh, there you go that was uh not having the drag set right and uh you know one of them it'll pull you into the wreck so uh let's try this slow jig this is an h2o 130 so i'm not flicking this out i want this to go really pretty much straight down so i can work this properly so yeah it's going down lovely but once that hits I'm literally going to give it a couple of turns and then just start working it. All right, so one, two, three, four, and then literally give it some of that. And what you'll find is if they're going to nail it, they normally nail it on the way down because it's fluttering, you know. Where are we? 
there we're just coming slightly to the side of this wreck actually i'm going to move around all the drift changes you know when you're coming up to slack water and the turn of the tide your boat and your drift all turn you know all uh, gets different where you were oops smashing my boat to pieces uh where you were um drifting one way before doesn't always seem to be the same the next so let's just get myself up i can see where i am now i know i already know where these fish are so i can get myself right on top of them right i'm going to be right on top of them now hopefully so they are tight on the bottom so i'm trying to keep as close to that bottom as i can yep nice nice great doesn't feel super super huge but as i say they don't really start fighting until they see the water but i don't think it's a monster of the deep but it'll do i'm happy with that it's almost like years ago in the 80s when i sort of first started boat fishing you used to perk you know but it's uh, just a different action oh my dear god oh well oh dear well it's a bit disappointing but <laughs> but at the end of the day like it did uh, it's hooked it, hooked it straight through the teeth but i mean that is not the monster of the deep there that's not even the species i want but there you go is what it is as it goes i'll be honest i've had a fantastic day what i'm going to do is i'm going to blip in a friend of mine's testing a propeller out he's put on his new boat new stainless steel propeller so i might just blip in get across this shipping lane and uh, go and find him and i may you know what i'm like i probably will whack a lure down on a reef on the way back in but um yeah i hope you're enjoying the video don't turn off yet you might see me catch something else in a minute so i've just got back into the lock it's uh, 10 to 1 so i had a cracking day thanks very much for watching see you next time